Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. This is Iron Torch 20, and we welcome you to my immediate reaction to Samurai Jack episode XCVI. And per usual, there are going to be spoilers here, so after watching the episode, feel free to come back here and hear my thoughts on it. But I will say right now that this was probably the best episode I've seen so far. I mean, this episode had it all, and we'll uh, get into it right now with the summary. So it starts off with a bunch of tanks uh, lined up near Aku's castle. And then you see um, these other guys like riding some sort of rhino-like creature. And then this third army of Scots led by the Scotsman. So we got to see his long anticipated return. And then you also get to see that the Scotsman had a daughter who is uh, also part of the army. And I also like the uh, way um, he like uh, just tells her to like change the way she was dressed. And then they like all end up tucking in their... Uh, I guess they're killed or something, and then just, um, end up covering up completely. I mean, that was just, uh, something I thought that was pretty funny. I mean, you had the Scotsman in a wheelchair just, uh, still being the badass he's always been. Which is something I did enjoy. So then they, um, attack the castle, and then you see Aku, and whoever that, uh, disembodied voice was that's, um, saying that they were under attack. But then we kind of forgot, like, how much of a badass Aku can be and how dangerous he can be. But then he showed us out loud just how dangerous he can be when he, uh, just showed up, uh, transformed into a bowling ball and just mowed down a bunch of the whole line of tanks. But then, um, the Scotsman then said this was a really bad idea and then just decided to retreat immediately afterwards. But then you see the, uh, Scotsman and Aku have this, uh, pretty lengthy conversation. And then the uh, Scotsman basically tells off Aku and saying that he has been a coward and that he's been hiding for the last however long since he still knows the samurai's still out there and that he still knows that Jack can still kick his ass. But then we uh, get to see that uh, then unfortunately um, Aku's just not going to take his shit and then just fries him with his laser beams. But then uh, that was a pretty tragic scene and I mean, that was definitely something I wasn't looking forward to. I mean, I was hoping the Scotsman would live a little bit longer. But it turns out the uh, writers were a little bit more creative than that. And after uh, his daughter then took back his sword, um, you get to see that the Scotsman's spirit kind of still lives on within his sword. And also, I do like... Uh, I mean, I do think that was pretty clever, the way that they were able to uh, keep the Scotsman in the show, even though... um. He still wasn't as strong as he used to be, and of course he's dead now, so that is still a way of uh, keeping him in the show. But then it is still unknown as to uh, what exactly he is going to do, but their plans are to uh, find the samurai and then help him defeat Aku. Of course, I'm not really sure how he's going to do that, but we'll see. And of course, uh, he's got Celtic magic on his side, so... I mean, the sword was made of magic runes, so that was definitely a way of keeping the Scotsman's spirit alive. So we'll see what the writers do with that. And afterwards, uh, we get to see the scene of uh, Ashi wrestling, or kind of wrestling between her conscience of to, uh, what Jack said and everything that her mother said. And it took me a while to realize this, but after since, uh, or ever since her mother said she was always the weak one, like easily distracted and whatnot. I um just realized that she was the one that was in um the part in the first episode where um she was training and then kind of uh, slipped off that uh one ledge and then you had the uh, mother like shove a staff in her hand screaming, Are you weak? and so forth. I mean, it just uh, took me a while to realize that was her. But either way, uh... So, um... After that... Jack ends up catching a ride with a water dragon and invites Ashi along. And then you get to see... Them riding, and then you get to see these dolphins, and... I do like the uh, look of happiness that Ashi had on her face. And this uh, episode really goes a long way towards Ashi's character development. And as was mentioned in uh, Mega Man NG's review of uh, this of the last episode, 
the uh, overall dynamic that Tara Strong and Phil Lamar had uh, between uh, being Jack and Ashi was very terrific, and if anything, this episode definitely improved upon that dynamic. And of course, it also helps when they're both great voice actors. But either way, uh, afterwards, um, Jack just decides to leave Ashi alone, and then it turns out that night that Ashi demands the truth from Jack. And then Jack's just being a little bit cynical, saying you won't change. But then that night, uh, he does talk about this um, myth of the sun and the moon that his mother told him. And then I really enjoyed the animation with this uh, particular story. How about how sun and the moon were riding a phoenix and then you get to see them like create the stars when she uh, was taught that Aku was the one that created the stars and whatnot. And then I also like the uh, vivid animation in contrast to the total darkness in this episode. And just like uh, this entire season, this was actually a pretty dark episode, but it um, actually does raise a few more questions and answers, but we'll get to that a little bit later. So anyway, um, that morning they get to see the uh, one tree that Aku left standing, and I do like the uh, bright colors that they had for the leaves, the uh, orange and the pink leaves. But either way, um, one thing that Jack said about that tree was Aku destroyed all the trees except for one. And that was uh, basically for him to show that he's the one in charge and he does like to send a message or also like leave reminders that, you know, this is what you used to have before I was here and then, and now that Aku's here, uh, this is all you have left. And then he also mentioned how the uh, city of Aku was um, the gateway to evil. And I also do like that um, in the GBA game, they have something kind of similar to the city of Aku. Like near the end of the game, of course. And that's uh, close to where you actually end up fighting him. But then again, it has been a while since I've played the GBA game. And I don't know, I just I got reminded of that. Yeah, sorry, just had a bunch of... Uh, Anyway, afterwards, uh, we get to see, um, are these, uh, vendors, and then Jack ends up getting some fancy new clothes, and then he also has a wide-brimmed hat. I don't know, I never really imagined Jack in a cowboy hat, but then, uh, you end up seeing the difference between this, the way Jack, um, or the difference between, uh, the previous seasons and this one, where Jack was more of a out-of-his-element. And then you get to see Jack kind of adapt to the times. I mean, that's just something with his clothes. But then they uh, show this kind of uh, immigration department where this uh, one guy who looks like a assassin or something with his red mace, he um, ends up uh, talking to this executive and then says, uh, this is your new home. And then um, it's pretty heavily implied that he's just going to go ahead and kick the crap out of people living there and then take the land as his own. And then Jack even says the innocent and the weak are preyed upon. So then Ashi feels like they have to do something about Aku, and then Jack ends up uh, admitting to Fee, saying that there's really no way out. And then this uh, definitely made me wonder, is there going to be a point where Ashi's going to end up fighting her mother, and maybe killing her mother? I don't know, that's uh, definitely something we'll have to look out for. But after that, uh, you end up hearing this uh, call for help, and it's this uh, kind of blue creature, and I'm not really sure what that thing reminded me of. It, uh, I mean, it definitely reminded me of something, but I don't know. I'll just have to look it up. But either way, um, apparently that creature remembered Jack and said, "You've come back at last, Jack." And then, um. Ends up telling him that uh, the children get kidnapped and were taken to some kind of weird factory. And then you hear this, uh, or then you see this um, machine like turn out this uh, dial, and then you hear this buzzing sound. And then it turns out uh, all the children end up attacking Jack and Ashi, and then 
They mostly went for Jack, and then Jack just told Ashi to uh, disable the source of the noise. But then you uh, see those same hands, or those claw-like hands, uh, pulling a bunch of switches, pressing switches and whatnot, and then it uh, meant up capturing Ashi with these, uh, or I guess these are uh, grabbing claws and or something like that. But then you see this uh, giant metal guy, and then he um, ends up torturing Ashi with electricity. But then I also uh, found it comical that um, this guy had to plug himself in just to recharge his uh, electricity. I mean, at least he's not like the Emperor from Star Wars where he has to, or he can just shoot lightning whenever he feels like it. But he uh, also said something really interesting where he mentioned that uh, children were easily manipulated and all you had to do was just uh, plant certain chips and then um, you can just get them to do whatever you want with certain noises. I mean, I don't know, I just kind of felt like that was a really interesting thing to mention in this episode. I mean, um, really, they could have just left it silent, but I don't know, for some reason that just stood out to me. But then, um, afterwards, Ashi ends up, uh, getting free from those metal grabbers for some, or somehow, and then ends up attacking the guy, and then, at first I thought this thing was a big robot, but it turns out there was actually a guy inside, which, uh, really begs a question as to what, um, that guy was doing and why he was, uh, using these children as a power source. But then again, um, that's not something they really answered in that episode, but... Like I said before, this was still a really fun episode to watch. And then, um, Ashi ends up defeating him, but then, uh, you hear this, uh, loud buzz, and then all the children end up passing out, and honestly, I thought they were all dead, and so did Jack. Although I did forget to mention that, uh, the children were actually overpowering Jack, and then the, um, guy inside that giant robot then said, Foolish samurai still can't kill an innocent, or an innocent. Although, um, it is interesting that, uh, they kind of figured out that's his weakness and have been using that against him. But that's just, uh, something that is interesting to know. But it was, uh, pretty heavily implied that the, uh, children all died. And then, um, afterwards, I mean, me and Jack kind of had the same reaction of just screaming no, except, um, I didn't really scream that out loud, I just said... Or I just thought that in my head. That was all. But then you got to see the, uh, dark samurai shogun dealy, or guy in, um, that, uh, creepy green background, and then you end up hearing him saying in an ominous voice, It is time. And then, um, Jack ends up following him, and you never really see where they go. And then eventually, uh, Ashi ends up, uh, trying to find Jack, and... That's actually where our episode ended, on a huge cliffhanger. And then, um, it's, uh, heavily implied in the next episode that Ashi's gonna be, uh, attempting to find Jack, and before Jack ends up doing something to himself. And it was, uh, also kind of implied that we might be seeing a long-anticipated comeback, or a long-anticipated comeback of the Woolies. You, uh, saw them in the comics, and then, uh, you also saw... Like creatures that kind of looked and sounded like them. So they could be coming back too. But further thoughts on the episode. I don't think I'd be going out on a limb at all if I said that this was the best episode so far. I mean, it uh, had everything. You had um, terrific character development. You had great animation as usual. You had um, the um, improving relationship between Ashi and Jack. And how um, she ends up uh, turning into one of the good characters. And then you, um, end up having some pretty intense action scenes as well as a, a, a huge cliffhanger at the end. So either way, we are, um, I think, uh, five episodes in. So either way, um, this season still has a long way to go, and this episode kind of did raise more questions than answers, but... I think this was definitely laying the foundation for something really big to happen later on. 
So with that said, I will see you next week for this.